Okay, hi YouTube. So this is a little different than what I usually do. Usually I kind of do a lecture format, but today we're doing something more interactive. So it's been, well, first of all, I am Nurse Jessica. Uh, Jessica Lovato RN is the name of my channel and I do a lot of videos on nursing and healthy living. So today we're doing a video more along the lines of healthy living and I'm excited to embark on a project that I've been wanting to do for a while but just kind of haven't gotten around to it and that is making kombucha. So for those of you who don't know what kombucha is, kombucha is a type of fermented tea um, but it's said to have great health benefits which I'll get into more towards the end of this video. So it's really easy to make, so I've heard. We'll see, you are doing this with me for the first time, so we'll see how it turns out. Let me start by telling you what you're gonna need if you are wanting to make kombucha at home. So you will need the SCOBY and the starter juice. You can't go anywhere until you have those things, and one of my friends supplied me with mine thanks erica so this is what it looks like you can see the scobies in here which are sort of those gelatinous jellyfish looking things and the starter juice which is this sort of amber colored juice so a scoby is essential is essentially a colony of bacteria and it's what does the fermenting of the tea to turn it into kombucha the end product does not have sugar or caffeine but you need both of those things to get started so let's go over everything you will need to get going on your kombucha so the first thing was the scoby and the starter juice the starter juice is essentially just a little bit of kombucha You'll need a cup of sugar, a gallon glass jar, it has to be glass, it can't be metal or plastic, about six tea bags of black tea, or you can do loose leaf. You need some kind of cover to go over the top of the jar. You don't wanna use just the plastic lid that it comes with because then it can't breathe. A rubber band to tighten the cloth and a spoon for stirring. And then you're gonna want to, to do a gallon of kombucha, which is what I'm doing right now. You're also gonna want eight cups of water to brew the tea with. Okay, so now I am going to brew my tea. Oh, also one other thing. You don't need this, this is optional, but if you want, you can get one of these awesome, it's an aquarium thermometer, but it's like a dollar, and you can put it on the side of your glass jar to make sure you're at an okay temperature before you put the SCOBY in, because if it's too hot, then it shocks the SCOBY and it's not gonna, it's not gonna ferment. Okay, so let's make the tea now. Okay, so I just added eight cups of hot water into my gallon um, jar. So some other things I wanted to mention is that it needs to be filtered very hot water. So I just used my Keurig and got eight cups from there. You wanna steep the tea for a while to have really black tea. So for about 10 minutes, so I've got about eight more minutes. I already went ahead and poured the sugar in just to get it started dissolving, but I will be stirring it just to make sure that we've got it dissolved really well. Um, some other things I wanted to mention is to make sure you wash your hands before you start this proje uh, project, and then also clean the glass because even though a SCOBY is essentially a colony of bacteria, you still don't want to be introducing a bunch of bacteria from other sources because it might not place a nice with the SCOBY and your project could be done before it even begins. So we're just going to hang out here for a little bit. I'm going to keep brewing and stirring and then we'll get started again on the next step. So some things I've already learned in this brewing process. One is this water is really, really hot, so it takes a little bit to cool down. I actually ended up adding some ice water to it. Um, this 
thermometer seems to be working well. So right now, you can see the color is lit up, maybe you can see, between 75 and 79 degrees. So that's just where we want it to be. So now, oh, also I realized that when you, instead of holding the tea bags, you can just put this rubber band on. And so that way you can go walk around and do stuff while you're waiting for your tea to brew. So we've got some nice black sweet tea here. And moment of truth, we are going to, to <laughs> put the SCOBY and the starter juice in. Stuff is crazy. Swim. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. They're so weird, but they're really cool. Science. Okay, so that's it right now, guys. We, we want to take our cheesecloth, which I mean, this all came together as a little kit, the jar and the cloth with the rubber band. But if you just happen to have a jar, you can you could use a paper towel, but I've heard to be careful with that just because sometimes the particles fall off. Or you could just use maybe some thin towel or whatever you've got lying around. So there we go. There we have it. So now we wait. I'm going to set this on top of my cupboards for a week. And we're going to want this dark liquid to turn into kind of a nice light amber. And then we're going to go through the second fermentation process. So, oh, and also I heard that people bless their kombucha before it ferments. So I'm just giving some prayers and some good vibes here. And you're just going to be great kombucha. Okay. I don't know, awkward first time blessing the kombucha. See you in a week. All right, everyone, we are back. It has been approximately nine days since we started fermenting our kombucha. And as you can see, hopefully, we now have this nice amber color, which is the color that you're looking for. And we also have the formation of a new SCOBY on top. So that right there is success in a bottle. So now we have the kombucha, which a portion of which will be used as our starter kombucha for the next batch, and we have a new SCOBY. So we could essentially double the amount of kombucha we wanna make for the next batch, or you could give a SCOBY to a friend, just whatever you're feeling. Okay, so now we're gonna start the second fermentation. So I actually, I've already, just to make sure that this kombucha is kinda of in the right spot, I went ahead and sampled some and it is really good. So it, it tastes like kombucha, but it's slightly sweet with no fizz at this point. So the point of the second fermentation is to A, add carbonation, and B, add a flavor. So I am gonna be adding some mango flavoring and I just have some uh, mango puree right here. So speaking of which, let's go over what you need for the second fermentation. So you have your kombucha and SCOBY. You're gonna need gl glass bottles, because remember, you you don't wanna use plastic or metal. So I got these at Hobby Lobby. They're about three bucks a piece. Um, but you could also ask around to see if any people have glass bottles. Like for example, one of my friends drinks a lot of kombucha and I asked her to save bottles for me, which is exciting because that's another way for me to save money on this little adventure here. So thanks Alexandria. Um, also I have a bowl which will contain a little bit of the kombucha from this as well as the SCOBYs which is why I've already washed my hands really well because I will probably be touching the SCOBYs. Um, other than that, we need a ladle, a strainer, and a funnel. So here we go, let's get these into the bottle. Okay, 
so there you have it. Um, as you can see, part of the way through, I realized I had more kombucha, so I grabbed an old pickle jar that was clean and uh, split up some of the mango. So now I have four bottles of awesomeness that I am gonna let sit for about two days. Um, keep these sealed because the point is to force the carbonation created by the second fermentation to go into the liquid. So that way you get something nice and fizzy and we're gonna have mango kombucha in about two days. So join me for the tasting. I'll see you in two days. So what's left over is the starter kombucha and the SCOBY, which I can use for my next batch. Also, I poured the starter kombucha and the SCOBY into this bowl. The main reason to do that is so you can rinse out your vessel. I just used really hot water for about 30 seconds. Um, they say to kind of steer clear of harsh soaps because that could be bad for the SCOBY. All right, everyone, I'm on call. So I figured I would film this very last portion of my kombucha video. So it is done. This is the final product. I made mango kombucha. It just got done fermenting for an extra two days for fizz. Um, and I'm about to try some. All right, ready? Cheers. Don't pull those over. And that is really good. I'm really happy. It turned out awesome. I've already got my next batch brewing. So, hey, pennies on the dollar to make it this way. It's really not that difficult. And look how excited. All right, guys, have a healthy week. Comment below for questions. Like, subscribe. Yay! Okay, bye. <laughs> One last thing, once you're ready for it to stop fermenting, which is what you want after about two days, just throw it in the fridge, it stops the fermentation process, and you are good to go. <laughs> and I forgot to talk about the health benefits. Oh my gosh, I was editing this with a 10 month old crawling all over me. Anyways, health benefits are improved digestion because it's full of awesome probiotics and also fizz is good to help with upset stomach. It's also supposed to improve energy and be an awesome soda replacement because there's very few calories um, and no added sugar. For sure helps with gut health, energy, skin, and a healthy drink alternative.